So if no question, in these lectures, again, I'm using a book by Murak. The book is called My SQL, third edition, Murak. Murak books are very good. They have a lot of computer science books. I have the Murak book for My SQL. Uh, I also have it for Python and I have it for C++ and Java. The reason why I like Murak, Murak textbooks, it's like a hands-on textbook. So if you have the textbook, even it will follow you step by step on using the application. For example, if it's Java, they write the code step by step using the SQL, I mean, the Java uh, application to run it. Everything is more or less answer. So uh, you can, they should have a copy in the library. You can look at it. It's not our textbook for this course, but again, most likely there's a copy. So our main objective in this lecture is is to go through how to use the insert command, update command, and delete command in uh, SQL. So insert already tell us what the command will do. If I want to insert uh, values or records into my table, I can use insert command. Update also if I want to update any of my database objects. Delete means I want to delete the content, not the object. So for example, if I want to delete a table, uh, if I want to delete the whole item, the whole table, I will use the drop command. But if I want to delete some items, some records from the table, then I can use the delete command. So there's difference between drop and delete. Drop means you are dropping the whole table, deleting, removing the whole table. Delete means I'm removing some specific records. So that's the main goal of this, uh, our lectures. So we start with the syntax of create table. Um, so we did create table already, but also sometimes we can create table as command. Uh, we know we use as for alias. I mean, create, I have a, let's say for example, I have a, a column, a number of hours work and hourly rate. And I have another column, or let's say I want to create a third column, but I want to multiply these two items and create a third column. So in this case, I can use as with a color, I will create a new column, multiply uh, the two values or using any function to do some work. The result, I want to put the result in a new column. And maybe I may have the column new name as alias. Maybe there's a column named already, but I want to create a new column for it. So we know a table cannot have two columns, the same name. They have to be different names. So sometimes we can use this as also for create. So here we can see the, uh, the synthesis, create table. You put a table name, but when we put a table name here, we use as a select statement. So this select statement may be a query, it's a query. So this select statement maybe we get information from other tables or uh, some whatever we want to get. Then we are going to put those information into that new table we have. So this is a new, again, create table. Let's see an example here. So here we are going to create a table. Again, in this textbook, almost every, uh, even my SQL, the command should be uppercase and your name should be lowercase. So you have a command create table. The table name is invoices copy. But what I'm doing as I'm select all from invoices. So this means I have a table name invoice, you know that from always go with the table where it's coming from. So select all from invoices means I'm selecting all the records from invoices table. But we can also write this command by saying that create a table, the table name as, then we select everything from invoices, we putting it into the invoice copy. So that's a command to create a complete copy of invoices table. It's like we have the table already, but we're making a copy of it. So we can use as keyword. 
it's more or less like creating an alias or something. I have a name, Charles, and I'm creating alias of Charles to be, let's say, William. So I'm creating a table, Charles, as Williams, uh, whatever information for Charles. Uh, another one here says create a partial copy of the invoices table, which means we don't need everything. So create table, old invoices as, but we have a condition now. We're selecting all from invoices. The condition said where the invoice total minus payment total minus credit total equal to zero. We, we must have all these three fields in our invoices table. So when we do this calculation of these three fields, I subtract uh, credit total and payment total from invoice total, the answer is zero. Then I, know I need only those records. And I want to put those records in a new table called old invoices. So you can try to run this. The only thing we have to be careful with this, this is more or less like creating a copy of something of a copy of a table. So if I say create table invoices copy as, I must have a table name invoices already. So I have invoices table already and I'm getting all the content of invoice table to invoices copy. Here also the same thing. I'm creating a table name old invoices, but it's like a copy from the original invoices table. But I'm not going to copy everything from invoices table. Everything is based on the condition here. The condition here said, if I subtract invoice total minus payment total minus credit total, if the answer is zero, then I need that record. I need that information. Again, the select statement, we already went through it. So if I have a condition saying select all from invoice, where always select the next will be the columns. You are going to select the columns. When we put asterisk, it means we want to select all the columns. But let's say, for example, I want to select only two columns. Select, uh, let's say last name, comma space, first name, comma space, invoice total, payment total, etc. I can write those columns. If not all the columns, I can specify the columns. Uh, then from always go with what the table, where it's coming from the table. So select what columns, from what table, the table is invoices, where is always what the condition is. So the condition here said, if invoices total minus payment total minus credit total equal to zero, then we need that record. This means all these three columns must be inside the invoices table because we are going to do this calculation. Or the same time we have information, select all from invoices where city uh, equal, let's say, uh, New York City or Bronx. This means I need all the records of the people from Bronx or New York City. So again, where is where we put our condition? From is always the table we are getting information. Always we select the columns. So next example, we have a create a table with a summary rows from the invoices table. So we are creating a table with a summary rows. And this summary rows will come from the invoices table. So you can see that we are using the sum function. So first command create table, the table name will be vendor balances. And we are using as, which means we are getting the information from an existing table already. So as, we select the vendor ID. So now instead of saying as select all, we are not selecting all the fields from the invoices table no more. We are only selecting the vendor ID from the invoices table. Also we sum the invoices total 
summarize invoices total as what sum of invoices. So we need only two columns, vendor ID and then sum of invoices. And this will be the name of it, but the information will come from invoice total. Invoice total is inside the invoices table. And the column name will be called sum of invoices now. From where? Uh, from invoices table. And what condition? The condition here is saying that if the invoices total minus payment total minus credit total is not equal to zero, greater than a less than sign together with no space between means it's not equal. So that's our condition, it's not equal to zero. This time we are going to group it. A group is come kind of like sorting by grouping. We group it based on the vendor ID. Then the next thing is we want to delete a table. So as we said earlier, if we want to delete the whole table, we use the statement drop table or the command drop table. So we want to delete the old invoices. That's the previous table we create old invoices. Now, next we go to the syntax of the insert statement. Uh, insert statement means I want to put or enter items into the table. Most of the time we enter values or items into a table. So we start with the keyword or the command insert into the table name and now the table consists of columns. If you are not going to put all the items, uh, the items you are going to set, let's say you have 10 columns, but you want to insert item to only five columns or six columns, then you have to specify the column names or the column list. But if you are going to put all the items in all the column, we don't need to show the column list. Uh, we just start with the values. But what happened is that the first value will go to the first column. The second value will go to the second column. So if the data types are different, let's say the first column in my table, the data type is a int or a whole number, but I enter my name first, they don't match. My name is a, a character. The first column is a whole number, I will get error. So that's why sometimes it's good to specify the column list. And based on the column list, you list the values according to the column list also. So that's the syntax. Insert into table name. Column list is an optional. If you want to insert all the items in all the columns and you know the columns in order, you don't need to list out the column names. You just start with the keyword values with the parentheses and then enter all the values. When you enter the values, it's good to do it uh, row by row. Uh, it's kind of more readable. Like the example here, this is our column definition for the invoices table. We have the invoice ID, invoice number, date, everything here. And I'm sure invoice ID is our primary key field. It's not known. Uh, we have the tense ID, will be, most likely will be our foreign key. It's not known also, due date, etc. So if I know this is my invoices table and I want to insert an item, either I can list invoices ID, vendor ID, I, I have to list it in order as it appear in the table. Uh, or if I'm using, I'm going to put values in all the columns then I don't need to list the columns names here. I just have to make sure I have invoices ID, first value, vendor ID, second value, invoice number, et cetera, all the way. So here they say insert a single row without using, so this is what I'm trying to say. If I'm going to insert all the values in order as the column list appear on the table, we don't need to list the column name. So insert into invoices. That's the name of the table. What values? 
open a parenthesis, every value you enter, make sure you have a comma and space, comma and space throughout. See, character, we put it in a single quote. Values, we don't put it in a single quote, we leave it. And the last option value, we say we, we, we're gonna leave it. So it's a null. This means everything you go to one record, which is one row. And this means we are entering all the value from the beginning of the column names. Let's go back. Beginning of invoice ID all the way to the pay date, payment date, sorry, payment date. We didn't miss any column. Then we can ignore the column list. But if I'm going to choose only a few columns or I'm going to miss any one between, I have to put the columns in order. So here we have a vendor ID invoice number. The way we put this column list in order, the same way we are going to enter the values. So this time we are not looking at the table, but we are looking here. Now, if it's only two columns, I can just put vendor ID, invoice number, close it. Then I'll come here and enter only 97, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, now then close it. Only if the rest of the columns, the option of not null is not there, the null will be accepted. If null will be accepted, then that's okay. This is, you are inserting a new record. So you use the insert command. Now, for example, if I have this data already, but I want to update 97 to 80, then I have to use the command update. We have to use the command update. And I think that will be the next example. Again, this example of a multiple, this means I'm, you see the previous one, I enter only one record. But we can enter multiple record using the same. So one record, and each record you have to close the parentheses. So open and close one record, open and close two. So here we have three records. Now the next, the next one will go, we have a very short time. This is just again review. We did this already, but just to make sure we get it. We have a few minutes left. Uh, so I'll go straight to update. Uh, I don't think we have enough time. So that's the sentence for the update. So again, update means you have something already. You want to change it to update it. So we always use the keyword set. Update, what you want to update? The table name, where you want to update the table name. But most of the time, we want to update the content of the, the records the records in the table. So we, we start with a set command. So update. The table name is in lowercase. We can see the set is uppercase, which means it's part of the SQL command. You set. What you want to set? The column name, the expression, and the second column, the expression. Sometimes they have a condition. Uh, I may set it based on some condition. If the condition is true, then I will set it. If it's not true, we don't need to set it. So again, update the table name set, what column, what you are setting it to column, the expression, expression is what you are setting. So example here is uh, we want to update invoices table. So update invoices. Then we set the payment date. We are setting the payment date to 2018, September 21st. And then we set the payment total to 19,351 dollars 18 cents. We do this, we set this to not to all the records. We are setting it to only the invoice number that is 97-522. So uh, if all the, the, the invoice number most likely is the primary key field. So we are going to, this will affect only one row. We are setting again, the invoice, only one record, the invoice number of this. If we don't have the condition means we are setting everything, uh, which is, doesn't make, uh, logically it's not correct. Uh, I can't set, if I have 20, Customers, I don't want to set all their payment date to the same date, their payment total to the same amount. 
if that's the case, then we don't need the where. So we can update one column at a time, and we can also update multiple rows. The previous one, we update two columns for a single row, two columns, uh, single row, one record. We can also update only one column for one record or single row. For example, I want to update only the payment date, that's it. Where the invoice is this, that's the invoice number is the primary key field, so only one we can see at a time. But we can also update more than one rows. So for example, here we say update invoices. We should set the terms ID to one. So we are updating only one column for multiple rows. By here, where the vendor ID is 95. So you see that the vendor ID, it will be a foreign key in the invoices table because invoices ID is the primary key in the invoices. So how many times the vendor ID appears? Because remember, if you have, we have one to many relationship, which is common relationship between primary key and foreign key. Uh, example, let's say we have a student and a course. In the student table, we have the student ID as a primary key. In a course table, we may have the course ID as the primary key. Uh, maybe a student can take the same course twice or something. It may appear twice, maybe fail. Uh, or... So if you want to change something based on that relationship, one to many, if the student ID, the course you take, the same course two times or three times, then we are going to, and if we are doing the update, it will affect it two or three times. So here, vendor ID may appear more than once in invoices table because it's a foreign key, one to many relationship. So again, updating one column, it can be any amount of column as we saw in the previous, we just have to list all the columns set table, uh, I mean, sorry, set the column name to whatever, and the list keep going, the second, third, as we saw here is two columns. There should be only comma and space, but this is for readable. It's good to make it one row at a time, but you can see we have a comma here, which means the next one is a uh, different uh, information or different column information. If there's no comma, it will mean like we are setting everything to 2018-09-21. Payment total equal to this. It's like everything in one information. So you have to put a comma between the columns. Here also, we are updating one column for one row. So update what? The invoices again. We are setting the credit total and we are adding 100 to it. So the credit total will equal to credit total plus 100. Then we say where the invoice number is this. So this is one column for one row. Previously it was two columns for one row. And this is one to many relationship between invoices and vendor table. So one to many, more than one row. So we also in Workbench, we can do what we call the save update mode. And using the work again, at the moment we are using Workbench. And here we say by default, my SQL Workbench runs always in a save update mode. So the save update mode normally prevents us from updating rules if the work clause is submitted or doesn't refer to a primary key or foreign key. So you can see that the web condition for update is always either foreign key or primary key. Like here, where vendor ID is to be a foreign key because invoices. Here, where invoice number, this will be the primary, this is invoice number will be the primary key in invoices table. That's why it affected only one row. Primary key means each record is uniquely identified, only one. 
So that's an example. In the previous example, the same thing where uh, invoice number again. So this make it more safe. So most of the time the same mode, uh, the work crowds, if it's not primary or foreign key, it doesn't work. So save mode prevents you from updating rows if the work condition is not a primary key or foreign key. And also you can always turn the safe update mode off. Uh, they give us the option. I think we saw this, uh, there, there was one student who was doing some, running some code script, I remember, and it kept getting error. The error said the safe mode is on. So all you need to go, you go to the edit menu. This is for workbench, edit menu, the preferences command. Then you see the SQL edit, editor mode. Uh, then you can change it to save update option. Uh, you can turn it off. Now, if you turn off safe mode, uh, update mode, and omit work class, all the rows in the table will be updated. So what they are trying to say is that if I have update invoices, set term ID equal to one. If I'm not in a safe mode and I remove, I don't need to put where. And what will happen is that it's going to change all the terms ID to one all the records. But if the safe mode is on, updates always require you to have the where and the work condition you are going to use either foreign key or second uh, primary key in order for it to work. We always have this problem. Uh, I think a student had a problem uh, that that's the whole concept. So update all invoices for a vendor. Uh, you want to up update all invoices for a vendor. So command update invoices, the table, we are setting the terms ID to one. Where the vendor ID equal to, now is the, this is like the previous, we create a table and we run a query to get information from old table and put that information in a new table. So here is the same thing. The vendor ID now will be based on this condition. Here we say we're going to select the vendor ID from vendor's table where the vendor name is Pacific Bear. So here means we can write this as update invoices, set table ID to one where the vendor ID is Pacific Bell. This is only if Pacific Bell is in the invoices table. But here, this command will show that it's not in invoices table because we are selecting the vendor ID from vendor's table, where vendor's name equal to Pacific Bell. So we are getting the information from vendor's table and we compare it and we get the invoice information, the update, and the term ID to one. Now, here also we can update the terms for all invoices for vendors in three states, three different states. So we have to have a select condition. So update invoices, set the term ID to one, where vendor ID in, remember uh, we did this in module four, we are going to do this again. When we are doing the join, we'll get to information from different tables or information from different tables. Uh, we have query inside the query, select, statement, we can get information using in. So here, where vendor ID in, based on this, if this is in, and the condition here is saying that select vendor ID from vendor stable, where the vendor stable states is CA, California, Arizona, and Nevada. So this means we are updating the terms ID to one, if only they are from these three states, California, Arizona, Nevada. That is the vendors, the vendor IDs from these three states. Then we have the syntax of the delete statement. So delete from the table. Now, when we say delete, it, we are not deleting the table, but we are deleting the content of the table. 
So delete, we always use the where condition. Maybe I want to delete all the records where the customers are from New York. So that would be my condition. Is the city equal to New York or the city in New York? Then I'll delete it. So we are going to end somewhere here. Now in this section, this is where we start our module four. We're going to write a sub queries, uh, joint statement, etc. So again, what we have learned so far is the review of module three. And I'm going to wait for a few seconds if we have any question. Again, I'm going to post this video in the classroom. I can't get the videos to be posted, as I said earlier, in the classroom because the videos are too large files. So I'm going to post it in my YouTube channel and I'll post the link in the classroom. So any question before we leave? Yes, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, you don't the, mind your the, recording or you want me to stop the recording? Um, I don't mind. Okay, go ahead. Um, so the, the, the AP database assignment, is that in module four or three? No, it's module three. Like I was saying, uh, we need to review that. Uh, to prepare for these slides. Yeah, because I, I, I was doing that assignment. Uh, let's go. Uh, you can see that I put it in module three. This is module four. So create AP database and the table. Again, I posted a slide. The slide is here. So the slide gives us the instruction. Let me open the slide. So do your best uh, to continue. So the slide, uh, all you need, I think I post the link over there. So all you need is, uh, yeah, this is it. So you look at this year diagram or year diagram. Uh, year means extended entity relationship diagram. And create, use the only SQL script. And this is the review of almost every, the beginning of everything. And I think along the line, they even give us some of the code. Uh, yeah, this is it. So create database, AP, that's create a database. Then if I want to use uh, AP, you can, on the workbench, you can check it. You can select, you can select the database as I always do. I double click on it, select it. Or you can just write the command, use AP, then it will be selected by itself. So everything is already here, but as I said earlier, uh, go through this and make sure you run it and submit the screenshots. And that will tell me you did it. Everything is here, all this result. The only thing left is the record. I think I didn't post the record. Okay, I'll see if I can do that. And when you finish with the database, there'll be some records. Uh, yeah, I didn't do it. And also don't create index because we don't have no, we haven't done index yet, only the tables as it shows on the diagram here. Do not create index yet. So we're just creating those four tables then, and, that, and that's it. Yeah, five tables here, using the SQL scripts. And you have to take the screenshot of the SQL script, post it in Microsoft Word and submit it. And later I'm going to add, uh, I'm going to add records, then we, that's where we're going to do the insert values, command, etc., to add more records. And kind of we're going to use that database for most of the class uh, throughout uh, as an extra handsome work also. So for example, this is a statement to insert items into the invoices. So you do this, you do, again, I posted a slide. So everywhere you have the command to insert or do select, you do everything but you have to take the screenshots to show that again, you did it. And this is a Java code. You don't need to do the Java. If, if you see PHP or Java code, we are not covering that. For example, with MySQL, we can use Java, we call it JDBC, Java Database Connectivity. So I can write a Java program and you can see where the yellow is highlighted it's a script language, but in order to do this, 
this is SQL, but in order to do this, you have to connect your Java program to the database driver, the MySQL script. So you can see here, Java also has a package for SQL, which make it possible, like in uh, Amazon, you may see your application, the web application waiting. But at the back end, they have a database system. All these things are taking place, updating, selecting, etc. It's taking place in the database. And this is the, this kind of a real world um, solution ideas. So wait for a few more seconds. Again, it's our time has reached. We're going to end the class at 1.30. Okay, so again, see everybody on the, on Wednesday. As I said earlier, please do your best to do the past due assignment and also the quiz on module three. We still have like four students never done it yet. So do your 